Now we praying for you, Father God, in the name of just bless them. In the name of Jesus, you know we praying for you because bottom line is now you have shown us that you're not where you need to be. I, I do. I do this every Sunday, Sunday when we come here. Before I come in that door, that back door right there. Before I walk in, I say, Lord, whatever is bothering me, whatever is irritating me, whatever is frustrating me, I want to leave it out here. I don't want to bring it into the church. I don't want to put it on nobody else. I don't want to project it. Lord, I want to make sure that when I come in, I'm not causing nobody no problems. I'm not causing nobody no issues. And Lord, I want to be a vessel used by you because I want to be that vessel of honor. You don't want to be the one to cause your brother or sister to stumble in the house of God. And then you have somebody saying to you later, you know, you, yeah, you was messed up on Sunday. What's wrong with you? Because then it just sets you right back on that same wavelength again. I don't have to explain everything to you. When I'm upset, just leave me alone. Well, you, now you this is stage two now because you didn't did it once on Sunday. Now you're starting over again. Can I just say this and be done? Sometimes we need to get on our knees and ask God to forgive us. Help us with our problems. Help us with our issues. Because sometimes our mental ain't matching up with our physical. I'm serious. There have been times I got on my knees and said, look, Lord, my mood is not good right now. I said, my mind, Lord, I need you to help me with my mood right now. Because it's not good. Are you understanding because you can cause problems for people. Yes. So what do you want to do? Have to go around apologizing all the time? Or would you rather just get it right and I have to do all that? Get it right, get it right. Man, come in with a smile. Like, How you doing? God bless you. Instead of going, you know, yeah. you again. No, because you know what? Now you got to turn around and apologize. And if you don't apologize and if you really want to live right, guess what? The Lord is going to meet you in prayer. He goes, say, son, how you doing? Good. Did you really sound the way you're supposed to when you? And you know when God is right because He's always right. Amen. And He'll put it to you in a way that you know when He says it. It's just there's no defense. Did you speak to them the way that you were supposed to? No, Lord, I, I didn't. I think it would be good if you just went back and apologized. Amen. That's right. Are we understanding? Amen. But that's about those of us who want to live right. You can have your seat now. That's those of us who want to live right. Those of us who don't want to live right, I understand. You just go off on moods and tangents and you just want us all to understand. We're going to pray for you. But we all have to be the clay that God called us to be. We all have to be what he's asked of us. Let me help you out. Since we all are here, if we all do what God has called each of us to do, we will be a fully functioning church. We will be a church on the move. We'll be a church that's so strong when people see us, they'll say they're the only people again because, you know, they, they always on top of it. And let me just say this in closing because I, I know I already closed once. I'm going to close again. The bishop... I know Bishop tells him, says on his behalf. I'll let y'all, somebody else say it on mine. The bishop's job is to preach to you, to pray for you, and to counsel you. Anything he does outside of that is because he loves God and the church. Oh, I know y'all wasn't going to hear me on that one. Because see, in most churches, they just think the pastor ought to do it all. And if, you know, if I can't get to it, yeah, the pastor, you'll take care of it. It's not the way it's supposed to be. That's right. That's right. This is why pastors in the African-American church, see, we never retire. Because we can't. Amen. That's why we pastor into our 80s and 90s. Amen. If we make it that long. The average lifespan of a, of a pastor in an African-American church is 10 years shorter wow. than a pastor of another denomination, another background, another, I'm not going to go that way. Yeah. Another culture. Thank you, Sister Sissy. They have a retirement plan. They get 65. They get to retire. We get 65. We just, we just heating up. We got 20, 25 more years to go. (laughs) 
So I'm going to say this, and I just hope you accept this in love. Let's make Bishop Tellis' job easier. Yes. I don't want my jurisdiction bishop climbing on roofs. Doing all this stuff. He's our bishop. He's not Spider-Man. We don't want him on a roof. Pray. Also, let me let me say this. <laughs> let me say this. Amen. We have to love our leaders, and we have to make sure that they do only what they're supposed to do. This is how you keep Bishop well and happy and alive for a long time. Is by just saying, "Look, Bishop, no, that's not for you to do." Are we understanding? Amen. 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 Let him pray for you. Let him preach to you. Let him counsel you. Amen. And the rest, let's take care of outside of him. Amen. Are we understanding? Amen. And if you feel like he's doing too much, pray and ask God to send him a pastor's aid. Yeah. Because a pastor's aid can say, Bishop, with all due respect, I need you, I need you to sit down right now. Right. See, the elect lady, Lady Mitchell, used to be my pastor's aid. Oh, yeah. And she, she used to have these wise ways of coming to me and saying uh, is that something that you're supposed to be doing? I said, uh, I said well it ain't being done. She said no. She said is that, is that part of your job? I go uh, not, not really. She said well I'm going to ask you to step aside and let one of the other men in the church take care of that. And I said okay let me go sit down then. I was understanding. But my idea was okay if it's going to get done great but if it wasn't okay I'm going to do it. Amen. And that's kind of the heart of our leader here. We want to make sure that he's not doing more than he should be doing. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if nobody else does it, he's going to be here during the week trying to do it. Amen. And God's going to have to call me. God's going to have to call me in Beaverton on the spiritual line and say, no, leave work now and go stop Bishop Tells from doing what he <laughs> He got the ladder out. Go get him. <laughs> You got the ladder on the side of the building. Get on over there now. Get in the car and go. <laughs> we don't, don't have the Lord calling me because, you know, Beaverton is a pretty good drive from here. I don't, I, I don't have no police credentials. I don't have no red light to put on top. I can't speed through traffic like that. Y'all know I can stop. Come on, let's be real. So let's make sure we keep him happy and healthy. Let's do all that we can to take care of him. And we can do that simply by doing our jobs. And being who God called each of us to be. I'm done. Amen. Thank God for you listening. Amen. I pray this message was a blessing to you. Amen. 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 Am